Hello fans and friends, welcome to another video. My name's Keir Smith. Today's video is the third instalment of Perfect Album Sides. Thinking in terms of vinyl records, what is the Perfect Album Side? Side 1 or Side 2? Well for this video we're going to be looking at what I think is Lou Reed's masterpiece. This is Side 2 of 1973's Berlin. I love Berlin, Side 2 in particular of course, but the music is so majestic, powerful and very moving. And even though the concept, the narrative is such a sad, tragic tale, it's completely gripping. Berlin is a dark rock opera that follows the relationship of two fictitious characters, Jim and Caroline, two drug-addled bohemians. From love and adoration, the relationship slides into jealousy and icy contempt. Caroline is portrayed as promiscuous and unfaithful. And Jim goes from starstruck lover to hostile abuser, as I will tell on these four songs that make up side two of Berlin. Straighten at the deep end then, at this point in the album, Jim has become abusive towards Caroline. The lyric goes, Caroline says, as she gets up off the floor, why is it that you beat me? It isn't any fun. And later in the song, you can hit me all you want to, but I don't love you anymore. The soft arpeggio acoustic patterns are the perfect backdrop for these rather brutal lyrics. And producer Bob Ezrin's beautiful, understated orchestration, along with the soft, gentle piano playing, creates a sweetened, melancholic feeling. I find it all very moving. The lyrics are bitter and powerful, but the music is absolutely gorgeous. It's a beautiful song. Things get even worse in the next song called The Kids, where Caroline has her children taken away from her by the authorities because they said she was not a good mother. And the lyrics further tell us why. Because she was making it with sisters and brothers and everyone else, all of the others. Because of the things they heard she had done, all of the drugs she took, every one. As I said, this stuff is brutal. Another lyric, because of the things she did in the streets, in the alleys and bars, no, she couldn't be beat. That miserable, rotten slut couldn't turn anyone away. It's a cold and nasty portrayal. Musically, it starts with just Lou Reed on guitar and then Tony Levin comes in playing some great bass parts. And I really like the drums, the fills that are perfectly placed on this song. It's a case of less is more, allowing the painful story to be told front and centre. And then towards the end of the song, you can't escape the sound of these kids crying and screaming for their mother. It's beyond awful. It's the worst. And you hear this murky, out of tune recorder that creeps into the mix that makes the whole thing sound even more uneasy. This is the complete opposite of easy listening, but it's another incredibly powerful song. And it's a very important part of the narrative, delivered here in a cruel but brilliant way. Urban legend has it that the kids that you hear crying in the song are actually producer Bob Ezrin's. His boys were two and seven years old at the time. And apparently he told them that their mother had died in a bid to draw these performances out of them. But that's not true. The real story is that Bob Ezrin told his seven-year-old son that he was doing a play in the studio and that he needed some kids' voices to sound scared. The first few attempts didn't sound terrifying enough, but on the third attempt, unprompted, his two-year-old son joined in, screaming, and that had the desired effect. On the third song on this album side, Caroline takes her own life in the song, The Bed. And the harrowing story is told from the viewpoint of Jim, who does so with a truly eerie detachment. It's completely gripping. The slow acoustic motif that opens the song is beautifully played, wonderful, and that reoccurs throughout the song. And the lyrics go, this is the place our children were conceived, and this is the room where she took the razor and cut her wrists that strange and fateful night. And I love that descending shuffle of chords after Reed's tender vocal sings, what a feeling. And the song is haunted by these ghost-like choral vocal parts that come in after Reed sings that part 
and even more so at the end of the song. In fact, the last minute of that song is possibly one of the most frightening things I've ever heard on a record. Those vocals sound possessed. It's absolutely spine chilling, but absolutely perfect considering the lyrical content. And the grand finale to this tragic story is the aptly titled Sad Song, which finds Jim staring at my picture book. I thought she was Mary Queen of Scots. She seemed very regal to me. Just goes to show how wrong you can be. I love the way these lyrics go, like he's romanticising one minute and then he detaches himself the next when he sings, I'm going to stop wasting my time. Somebody else would have broken both her arms. But this tragic rock opera ends in majestic style with a big orchestral flourish. Stirring strings, triumphant horns, booming drums, excellent guitar breaks and that repeated chorus of sad song that sounds sad but relieved. This is a truly epic and wonderful album closer and huge credit must go to producer Bob Ezrin for his wonderful arrangement and production and that brings a close to the Berlin album, this perfect album side. So there you have it, that was side two of Lou Reed's Berlin, my perfect album side. Do you know this album? Have you endured and enjoyed this macabre masterpiece, this beautiful disaster? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Please give the video the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel, there'll be lots more to come. Thanks as always for watching, see you next time.